Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we are addressing the concerns of family burnout. Yes, people can actually get burned out with their families. But that isn't so Christian-like, Nicole. I mean, really. I mean, we're supposed to love our families and service our families and do all of these wonderful things. And yes, and many people have done just that. But people do get burned out. I mean, even Jesus had to take some time to himself, get away from the disciples a bit, pray, be with the Father, okay? Listen, family burnout happens. And I addressed a similar topic when it comes to Christians being burnt out with the church. Yes, we do have Christians who feel that way. And so what happens is, is that we take those concerns over to the Lord. Lord, I'm burned out. I'm simply burned out with all of the family celebrations, the family gatherings, the family connections, all things related to family. I need I need a reprieve. I need some time away. OK, some people, they're never burned out with their families. I get it. You love your family. You spend a lot of time with your family. You, you can never get tired of them. But there are those of us who, yes, I will be the first to admit we get tired. We get tired of routine. We get tired of teaching. We get tired of uh, disciplining. We get tired of a lot of things because we simply have exerted a lot of energy in different areas. And so we're looking for that rest, that rest that is a little bit longer than just that one day of the week. So there were different times where. I felt family burnout. It started when I was younger and my grandmother, God rest her soul. She was one of those who was demanding about the holidays. She expected people to come see her, uh, help her with her projects that she decided she wanted to do. Usually that involved food and people would help her, but then she would do this sort of thing year after year after year. And eventually family members who had been rolling out pie dough and helping out with rolls and checking on the chicken and the ham and the beef. I mean, because she would have as many as three meats plus numerous side dishes to go along. They got burned out. So they started saying no. And that at times angered my grandmother and she expressed her, her disappointment. Why is it that they don't want to help? Well, it's your project. I know it's my project, right? I know it's something that I want to do, but I mean, they're benefiting because they're getting something to eat. I mean, it's free food. They don't even have to pay for nothing. I said, but grandma, sometimes people get burnt out. You see? But I mean, don't they want to come around? Don't they want to? I mean, they don't see me any other time. It's my birthday coming up. It's the Thanksgiving holiday coming up. It's Easter Mother's Day. I mean, she would do her round of calls as the holidays would approach. And at some point, people stopped coming around. And this was very sad for her. She was disappointed. I guess the only time they really want to be bothered with me is if is if I had some food prepared for them. Well, I ain't doing all that cooking. And they didn't want to do all that cooking either because they had already spent time when she was younger helping her out. Okay. Whether food was the reason why they wanted to come around, okay, for some of them, or just simply to see her, the point was, was that people got burnt out. Okay, and some of you all, you get burned out with the holiday celebrating. You get burned out with the shopping. You get burnt out with the bills that come afterward. People don't know how you go through like you go through for at least a month or two because you're angered with yourself because of all the money you spent. And I know for some people, this difficulty that arises when one is spreading his or herself thin. 
can be debilitating. It can put you in bondage. And as I've said in other audio, here at NM Enterprise 7, we don't believe in supporting bondage of any sort. Okay? Emotional, physical, sexual, spiritual. We're not that channel. And we're not going to encourage you to do things that you don't really want to do. Okay? We will suggest some things, but we won't tell you that um, you either do it or else type of suggestions or demands. If you don't want to do something, you simply say no. You don't get the attitude. You don't make excuses. You don't cover up your feelings. You simply say, no, I'm sorry. I know this disappoints you, but I am at my wits end right now. I'm not going to be good company for you. Oh, but you will. I know, you, you know, I really need a time out. And people who love you, people who respect you, people who don't have some kind of personality disorder like narcissism, they're going to say, I understand. And there were times where my grandmother, who was very energetic about these holiday celebrations and really wanted things to jump off. I told her no, and she was okay. She may have talked about me to some folk, but at the end of the day, she was okay with it. I said, I'll come see you when everybody's not over there. Because there were those folks who didn't always get along with each other. And that can burn you out too. Sometimes it's not about you. It's about the folks around you. They are wearing you down. They have their tension in the atmosphere. They are upset over any number of things. They're holding grudges. Some of them have agreed to help, right? Be of service, but then they burn themselves out. And now they're taking their aggression out on everybody else because they should have said no. They're angry with themselves. So after the smoke cleared, that's when I would show up and sit down and talk with her. And we would eat leftovers and laugh about whatever, right? There are those of you all who you don't want to see everybody. You just want to see somebody. And you want that somebody to listen. You want that somebody to comfort. You want that somebody to give you undivided attention. And there's nothing wrong with requesting that sort of thing if the person is willing to do it. If the person's not willing to do it, you got God. You had God anyway, right? Even if the person was willing to see you, the point is, is that during times of burnout, I've got to run to my father. My father's going to give me peace. My father's going to strengthen me in mind, body, and spirit. My father's going to rejuvenate me. The husband says, we've been doing a lot of running around. We've been going here. We've been going there. I'm getting tired of all of this running around. Now, if you push him, just one more. Okay, another place and another. If you push him, then he's going to turn on you. He's going to get upset. He's going to get angry. He's going to be disrespectful. And yes, it's going to be hard for a wife to be submissive to a man who's being mean. But then you got to look at what part did you play? He already hung up the decorations, decked the halls. Because some people celebrate Christmas. I don't, but some do. Um, He already bought this and bought that he already sat in the car and waited he already went over to this mall and he did this and that with you and now he is starting to get aggravated can i tell you if you spend over the budget that can aggravate not only the person who who uh, is allowing you to spend the money but it can aggravate you too because then you realize there's some more things that i need to buy that are more important than buying all these gifts you can get burnt out with shopping. And then when you get burnt out with shopping, guess what you end up doing? Not getting what you really want. What you really need, I should say. You can get burnt out with the conversation coming from family members and friends. Because if you're dealing with that one that has the mental illness, can be a little bit peculiar at times. They might have some type of disability. 
and you're already frustrated about some other things, you can come off as quite harsh, quite cold, you see. You got to recognize when I am starting to lose it. I don't have any patience to deal with this one over here, that one over there. Sometimes we call people names when we're upset. And we call them names because we don't get what we want. Or they insulted us. And so we think that by calling them a name back, somehow it's going to just quell the storm. But it starts some drama. up. Some people are burnt out with the fighting. Okay. And so when you're burnt out with the fighting, guess what you do? You don't go around the person or people who you've been fighting with. It might be subtle fighting where there's no name calling. The person doesn't really know where you stand with them. You just know that you don't like them these days. It could be overt fighting. It's bold. It's in your face. And I'm just tired. I'm tired of it. Oh, every time you come over here, you got something to say. Every time you're in my presence, you got something to say. And then the mother or the father, whoever's like, there you go. There you guys go again with that. Don't you ever get tired of it? And the one who got the energy still says, no, I don't get tired of it. This knuckleheaded, you know what, big such and such, standing tall at about blah, blah, blah. Okay, there we go. I don't want to be here. I'm simply burnt out with all of the dozens, the ripping, as we used to say back in the day. Capping. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of his insults. Don't you ever grow up, man? I always got something to say about somebody. I always talking about something that you know nothing about. And here we go. Another fight. Family members can wear you out. And this is why we take rest in the one true God when we're dealing with all sorts of burnout. We ask the Lord to give us the strength. Through difficult times, the Christian knows how to pray. And those of you all who are curious about this walk, I suggest the first thing you do is accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. But I also suggest that you pray too. pray that the Lord will give you the energy to deal with all that the enemy is going to put in front of you. Because you see, when you walk as a child of light, you are not welcomed in every circle and that can drain your energy as well. And cause burnout spiritually. I got the energy to lift this up and lift that up in the physical. But when it comes down to the spiritual, I don't have the energy, says someone. And so they're dealing with the demonic. And the demonic is just chipping away, chipping away at their emotions. They're crying easily. Sometimes it's hormonal. Sometimes it's health related. Sometimes they are depressed. They're sad. They're irritated. And I will tell you that the bodily stuff will also wear you down spiritually. The biggest challenge that many people have who are typically yes people is saying no. I got to come back to this business of saying no. Because if you don't say no. When you really mean to say no and instead you say yes. That's when the enemy is going to play a mind game or two on you. He's going to. He's going to say, "Uh huh, you didn't really want to do this. Why do you go over here doing these things for these people? And you're going to start battling with them without even opening up your mouth. They're seeing service, but they don't see on the inside how you really, really don't want to do. Do whatever it is that you agreed to doing. And sometimes it shows up in the meal preparation. Everybody is gathered around the table and they start biting into the food and the food doesn't taste all that good. Because somebody really didn't want to do it. And there were times where going back to my grandmother where once she did finally manage to get everybody to come around and everybody was helping And sometimes the food just didn't turn out right because the people who were preparing it were not 
where they needed to be spiritually. You see, it takes special hands to bless food, to prepare food. The light needs to show up in that food. You see what I mean? You need to be that prayer warrior that prays over the food. When you know that people are disgruntled about helping once again, and that includes preparing food that has to enter our bodies, that's all the more reason to be in prayer and to also be that overseer to make sure that what they're doing in the kitchen is proper. You see. Oh, the enemy can use people in such a way to cause you to become very ill behind something that some hands that were not blessed didn't want to do, touched. Some of you all know what I'm talking about. So when you're burnt out, you're asking the Lord for strength. Let's go to the Bible now. Daniel 10, 19. O man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee. Be strong. That's a command. Be strong. Yea, be strong. And once again, part of being strong is learning how to say no. Even though the person's going to frown up their nose, go and talk about you. But you stand firm. You stand your ground. You pray before you say no. Maybe you, you say no to the wrong person at the wrong time. So just... Say no when you've prayed about it. And when he has spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak for thou hast strengthened me. You are to be strengthened, renewed in mind, body and spirit, not burnt out, not tired, not disgusted, not upset. You are to act in love, in kindness, gentleness, holiness, patience, and yes, even long suffering. Because you got to be long suffering with some of these people. I'll admit that in the past, I was long suffering with some of those folks. I continued to go to family events until finally I said no. I continued to listen to stories I really didn't want to listen to. I continued to eat food at times that upset my stomach, caused me to go to the bathroom. And I was having an uncomfortable time the rest of the time. There has been times where I didn't get along with folk. And I was still in the room with them anyway. And through all of those times, I recognized that if it wasn't for what I had gone through, there would be no audios. There would be no videos. There would be no compassion for you all. But I get it. But there comes a point where God will retire you from those settings if that's what you want. If you don't want that, then, of course, you just continue to be long suffering. Enjoy the time that you have with the people. But when you have reached that point where there is no turning back, there is no wanting this sort of gathering arrangement, whatever, with certain individuals, that's it. God will take it from you. He's not going he's not going to put so much on us to the point where we lose our minds. Now, that is not of God. Yes, he does put some stuff on us, but not to the point where we lose our minds. That's us doing that. I'm losing my mind in this. I, I don't have another another word to say to any of you all. You guys drive me crazy. I can't take this. Nobody told you to come. That's right. Nobody told you to show up. You see? And then in the back of your mind, as you're walking away, you're saying, that's right. So why was I there? Hmm. out of necessity maybe because you thought that you were going to get something out of it I was there because I wanted to appease somebody see you got to recognize why you do what you do and then once you recognize that then you've got to change your mindset you've got to change your thinking on it yes for 10, 15, 20, 30 plus years you always thought this way but it is okay to change and yes they will possibly expect you to show up or expect you to do this or expect you to do that because you train them you train them to think that way. But that's where you've got to say, Lord, I've got to untrain some people because they're expecting too much from me. And I really don't want to eventually resent or hate these people because that's where it leads. That's where burnout ends up taking you on that path toward. I can't stand these people. And some of you all are already there. That's why the Lord is breaking you from some things right now. Because he doesn't want you to stay in that space. 
that headspace of I can't stand I hate these people are this and that. And I did the audio already on hate. You don't want to go down that path. There is righteous hate. If you hate the evil, then yes, you don't need to be a part of that. Then if you're tired of all of the negativity that swarms around and you know it's ungodly, unrighteous, untrue, then yes, you have every right to hate that setting and hate the personalities that go along with it. And you don't have to be in it. I don't know what book some of these people are reading that says that you got to stay in toxic situations because that's your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your aunt, your uncle. Come on. That is the beauty of maturing. Ooh, Jesus maturing in Christ is when you can say no, when you can see the truth for what it is, when you can start distancing yourself, when you can start changing your mind on some things. Let's say that at the last minute you decide, no, this isn't what I want to do. You have every right to say that. Well, it's going to inconvenience some people. Well, if it inconveniences them, it inconveniences them. But it's better that you don't show up and be that one that causes all sorts of problems. Be that one that didn't really want to be there. Be that one with unblessed hands wanting to touch some food. Come on. I'm not in a good space. It's okay to say that. I'm not where I need to be right now. I'm going through a lot. You all know this. So don't expect me to be present. You know I got a lot of bills. Don't be looking for any gifts. You know that I am not all that into whatever, would whoever. I mean, sometimes you got to be bold about some things and be detailed, but other times you don't have to be detailed. You simply say, my family and I will not be attending the gathering this year. I thank you very much, though, for inviting us maybe next year. And that's it. And then if you need to tell somebody some details, then you tell them. Listen, as much as I would like to come to your event, I have decided to opt out due to all of the drinking that takes place. There's no limit to the drinking. I know, I know you, you like to have a good party. I understand that, but there's no limit to the drinking. I don't feel comfortable with having my children around folks who not only drink, but they smoke too. And we're not smokers. And I get tired of breathing in that smoke and all of the smells and, you know, I, so I will see you after the holidays. Okay. Real simple. And once again, if that person is all right mentally with what you're saying, <laughs> they're not going to be any problem. But sometimes it takes you having to state how you feel or to say no to something for you to see who a person really is. I've said this in other audio. God will set it up that this time you don't make it so that you can be able to see who this person truly is. I thought I suspected I wasn't sure, but now I know. It was never about us. It was always about her selfish needs. It was never about us having a good time. It was always about how she looked when we would come around. Wow, the truth hurts. The truth hurts. Ever since I told her I couldn't show up that one time after 20 some years of showing up, do you know she don't even want to talk to me? What's wrong with her? When I was going through all these trials and she knew how close I was to so-and-so and yet she wanted me to do this and do that. She acted as if I didn't have any type of grief, wasn't going through anything. The audacity of her. To not acknowledge my feelings during this tough time. But I get it now. I understand. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for exposing some people. You see, I'm giving you an example. And God does it. He does it every time. Psalm uh, 119, 28. My soul melteth for heaviness. Your soul will melt. It will feel heavy at times. Because you discover some real truth about some people. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Once again, I'm running back to the Lord. I found out some things. I'm not too happy. I don't want to be around these people. I'm going to the Lord. Okay. That's what you do. Isaiah 30, 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. You see, I am returning back to the Lord. I'm resting in him. There is no answering the phone. There is no um, getting on the internet. There is none of that. I'm resting in him. 
If you're staying home for the holidays and you want it quiet and peaceful, then make it like that. Quiet and peaceful in your word, praying, studying, showing that self-approved. Listen to this. In returning and rest shall be saved in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. You see? But if I'm burnt out and I got my <laughs> and I got myself here, there and everywhere, how am I resting? How am I quiet? My confidence might even be shattered because those very ones that you're bending over backwards for. <laughs> they tend to be quite critical. And they will disrupt your mood. You went from being really happy and jovial to uh uh-uh. uh. There was one um event that I hosted through through my job and uh first thing that came out the woman's mouth was and she looked at the various desserts. Oh, I don't see anything here that I would like. Nah, there's nothing here, right? After spending all those time all that time stacking things and putting things up and doing and then somebody comes along and says something, you know? And for that moment, I was like, oh, no, she didn't. But then I realized it's not that serious, right? Because look at all the other people who said it was great. It was wonderful. Thank you very much. And bless me with tips. So God is a good God. Ephesians three sixteen and 17, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. God grants you. How does he grant you? According to the riches of his glory. But how do I obtain those riches? What are those riches? Those riches start with resting in him, trusting in him, seeking him. I'm seeking him about this next event. I'm seeking him about who I'm going to be around. I'm seeking him about what's coming out my mouth. You see, I want some riches, but I'm not going to get the riches if I'm not abiding in him. I'm not listening to him. I'm not obeying him. I'm not even praising him. Good things happen and I'm not putting my hands up and worshiping him and thanking him. What's wrong with me? You see. The Christian gets his or her strength from. Trusting in the one true God in believing in him. In allowing him to order his or her steps. You see. I'm allowing God to change me too on the inside. Because remember, if I was to be easily offended by something, then what would I do? I would lash out. And then if I lash out, then I am hurting my witness. And then if I'm hurting my witness, that is one less person that's going to take a believer seriously. That's one less person that's going to consider walking this walk. And some people during burnout, they say and do things that cause people To not want to walk with Christ. That's why it's best to sit yourself down. Before somebody else does. To go off somewhere. And take the needed break. Before you say or do something. That's going to cause problems. And if that means that. You got to sit yourself down. And aside and apart. (laughs) For years. From a family. Then you do that. Here is another scripture that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. I'm walking with the Lord. I'm going to please him. I'm I'm thinking about that. I'm focused on that. I want to do the types of things that please him. Like what people do when they want to please each other, right? They want to make sure that they're, um, they're on somebody's good side. I want to make sure that I'm on the good side with the Lord. So if God says, I don't want you going over there, then I need to make arrangements so that I'm not going over there. If I see, maybe God doesn't say anything, but I see some things are not right. Then I am going to make the necessary arrangements to make sure that I'm not where there's some wrong things happening. You see, I mean, a lot of this walk is proactive. We don't just pray Leave it to God and then just sit there unless, of course, it is one of those things where we are in doubt. And I have this book and I hope that some of you all would consider getting it. It's called Should I Go to the Party? 
And even though something as simple as a party, something that you have been going to for years, uh, you know, something that you just simply say yes to, this book is going to cause you to think a bit differently when it comes to accepting these event, uh, event invitations. It's going to cause you to um, consider others. And the long-term effects as well as the short-term effects. Some of you all should have got the book a long time ago. And then maybe you wouldn't have had these major falling outs with some folks. But you want some preventative maintenance. Then go ahead on and get should I go to the party. Very, very short read. You'll get it done within 48 hours before a family event or some other event. Definitely get that uh, click on that link. Should I go to the party? So I've given you some scriptures, but I want to leave you with this one. Psalm 18 two. the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. That's where your trust is, even in these times of trying to figure out whether or not I want to go somewhere, be with someone, call someone up, help this one, do this, do that. And even during those times where I've done all of that and I'm simply burned out. Let the Lord be your rock. Let him be your fortress. If you can picture him as a rock, and if you can see a fortress, you know you're protected. My apologies, dear one, but I am not going to be able to attend the event. I know that I had committed myself to helping you all, but unfortunately, I have reached a place right now where I'm not going to be able to offer service. That place, unfortunately, is not a good place in my mind, my body and spirit. I'm simply tired. Once again, understanding people will recognize that there is something that you're going through right now. And if you want a successful event, you're not going to put any pressure on anybody, right? Who is not in a good headspace. You're simply not. I don't want anybody who's troubled in mind, body and spirit showing up. I don't know if that sickness is catchy, right? So... Be understanding, those of you all who are event planners, hostesses, and also those of you all who need this time, just relax, okay? Relax, get back in touch with the Almighty God, read His Word, and uh, God will bless you, and most of all, pray. Well, that is it. Please do check the description box, especially for that link. Should I go to the party? Also, if you do have some shopping that you need to do, there's a book that I created to save some people some money. I don't know if you all have been paying attention to it, but that book is Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Check that one out. Thank you, as always, for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. Please do subscribe if you haven't. This is YouTube Enterprise 7. And if you haven't given, we do welcome donations as well. Blessings to you.